Today we're going to find out if my DIY built 4L60 transmission is going to hold up to the power and torque of my LS swapped supercharged all wheel drive second gen cyclone. Or maybe it's going to blow up on the very first test drive. Now, in the high performance world, the 4L60 has a horrible reputation for being extremely weak and basically a complete waste of time and money to build. But I decided to ignore years of probably sound advice and build my very own 4L60. We upgraded it in a few key areas by including some extra clutches, better rotating parts, and a few more upgrades. And today, we're going to find out if it actually works. But first, We'll get a few parts that we get to install to finish up our project and then we'll top it off with fluid and hit the road. Got to admit, I'm a little bit nervous. It's summertime so that's the sound you guys are going to hear in the background of my videos for the next couple of months because it's hot. We need to put some drive shaft loops on this truck too. Now, being a V8 swapped mini truck, clearances are pretty tight under here, but <laughs> this is one of the puzzles, is getting the starter in and out. Like, it can go, but there's a very specific clocking. You've got to kind of twist and hold your tongue just right to get it up in. It doesn't require brute force. It just requires perfect positioning like that. And because I'm a nut for OEM quality stuff, I'm going to put back on my little plastic dust cover. If you're ever considering building an all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive swap S10, just don't. Just do what everybody else does and build a two-wheel drive. You'll have so much more room for activities. one is probably the hardest part of all just because you need like eight hands or some helpers but it's Sunday so I'm here by myself. <laughs> Wish me luck. Right. I think one of the most basic jobs of being a YouTuber is remembering to hit the button to record what you're doing. I forget way more times than I care to admit. Another fun fact, out of all of the exhaust systems that I've built, this one took the most time, but I like it the most. But all that means is the next time I build an exhaust has to be even better. That's one thing I always strive to do. Everything you build needs to be better than the next, or than the last, in some way. Whether it's more quality, more complexity, solves a problem better, whatever it is, always be improved. A, B, P. No, A, B, I. Been working a lot lately. So this is kind of it, the big moment. The exhaust is on, all the wiring is tight, transfer case is filled with fluid. 
Now all we got to do is put some fluid in the trans, start it up, cross our fingers. supercharged I mean I went right from the blower install to the trailer to LS fest to a blown transmission to sitting in the garage so I really haven't enjoyed this one at all so I, I think that's what I'm most looking forward to all right here we go first run through the gears first second sounds good third I don't have it. Okay, there's third locked, and it won't shift to fourth until at least 55 miles an hour, which we have right there. All four gears. Now, I know shifting through the gears is kind of like the bare minimum of a transmission, right? Um, but because I'm, I don't want to say unfamiliar. I've had, I've had a handful of automatic transmissions that I've rebuilt, but not many and so anytime I pull them back together I'm always nervous like is it gonna work is there gonna be something that I forgot I mean we did all the air checks we did all the measurements and I think well obviously now that we're driving it everything is gonna be great but it's this fir first test drive the first couple miles that's always the most nerve-wracking cluster here like my full-size trucks do but I've got the data logger running uh, right now we're at 118 on the trans temp which is great uh, we do have a really big true cool uh, transmission cooler on this one so temp should be nice and nice and comfortable even on a hot day like today realistically we probably ought to get 30 to 50 miles on this thing before we go nuts but like a lot of race transmission builds, you know, they get thrown in the car and they go wide on the throttle right away. So I, I think it would be fine, but... <laughs> that supercharger sound is just addictive. Get on it here a little bit, not full throttle. 
of maybe half. So, um, we may be at risk for something breaking, and I'll tell you why. Not because the test drive went wrong, in fact, the test drive went very right, which is why I'm worried, because uh, I have this weird superstition that if more than two-thirds of your project cars are running and driving as they should be, one of them is going to break. <laughs> uh, but seriously, though, the test drive went awesome. Huge sigh of relief for me right now because it shifted through all the forward gears, the torque converter locked up like it should, reverse works, no funny noises, um, the fluid level is holding, it's not, you know, it, it's doing exactly what it should, which, you know, I am just so, again, relieved about because I have never been inside a 4L60 transmission and that just tells me that we must have done something, right, because it's functioning. Now, in terms of how long is it gonna last, well, that's a whole other story. Um, we did about 30 miles on it so far, stop and go traffic, a couple of <clears throat> wide open throttle rips, but uh, it's, it's doing awesome. Long-term, who knows? Um, of course, we always wanna up the power on these trucks, but um, for now, I'm just gonna drive it, enjoy it, put some miles on it. Um, there are a few other bugs with the rest of the truck that driving it, I mean, today it was like 100 degrees outside, driving in this hot weather it kind of reminded me about it. i forgot about them after the transmission blew but um, cooling system is going to need some work um, it maintains like 220 225 at idle like in stop and go traffic but that's both fans on high blast um, i'd love to have a bigger radiator in there but honestly that does mean a redesign of the whole front end i think someday i'm going to try to put one of those 34 inch silverado radiators under here but um, that's major surgery, but uh, something that I'll think about. The uh, intercooler system, that definitely needs some more square footage as well, uh, but the truck's doing awesome, so I cannot, I can't complain at all. Okay, truck's running good, but before we start racking up the miles, there's a safety issue that we need to take care of, front tires. Now, uh, I've run these Pirellis on a couple different trucks. I had them on Ugly Truck for a while. I have them on the S10. And I really like them because they're kind of in that like 28-ish inch tall zone. And it's a 275-45-18. It's a fairly sticky compound that, I mean, for like an inexpensive street tire. But um, after we got back from Vegas, and driving around town here with the wonderful roads in Colorado Springs. <laughs> they're, uh, they're chunked pretty good in many, many places. So, got a set of freshies that will get mounted up, then we can start racking up the miles in our new transmission, safely. Tire lube on my tires. 
You know, the funny thing is, after I got this transmission built and made the video about it, I got a zillion people in the comments referencing another YouTube video, and it was where the GM undercover engineer went on, on the podcast or whatever, and he was talking about quality, and the five pinion planet thing came up. And it's funny because, I guess like everybody else, I have been under the impression for ages that the GM five pinion planets in the 4L60 were the, you know, the go-to move if you wanted to make it hold power. So of course I threw them in there and so far everything's holding them great. But according to that video, the five pinions are made from an inferior metal than the original four pinion one. So I guess we'll find out if the five pinion planet was a good move or not. But um, for now, truck is running beautifully. The transmission is shifting through the gears just like it should. Played with the shift points just a little bit. Uh, it went to like 6,800, hit my rev limiter on the one two shift once. So I got that back down just a little bit. Um, I remember I raised those up when we were in Vegas trying to get to a little bit quicker down the quarter mile. But anyhow, um, yeah, transmission's doing great. It stays at a nice cool temperature. Um, and it's, this truck is so much fun. It's small, it's lightweight, makes tons of torque. And realistically right now it's, you know, probably 600 ish horsepower the way that it's set up. And it's a lot of fun. So, um, just going to keep driving it. I'm going to put some more braking miles on it. We do have to get back to the dragster before the end of the summer. I think the next, uh, excuse me, next, uh, test and tune down at Pueblo is like, I think it's towards the end of July, but I, I want to make this truck run an 11 second pass and I think it's doable. Um, we got a few tweaks that we're going to do to the heat exchanger system, but let me know what you guys want to see with this truck. Cause I'm not, you know, I'm not entirely sure where I want to go from here. Um, the possibilities are endless. We could put a bigger engine in, we could switch, um, suspension. Well, the front, I do want to do the coilovers at some point up front. Sway bars, I do need to upgrade those, make it handle a little bit better, especially like autocross and stuff like that. But for now, she's got a fresh set of tires up front, great running engine, great shifting transmission. We did our three link suspension last winter. Um, so it's a little hot rod and we're gonna, we're gonna put some miles on it. So thank you guys for watching. Come back soon.